So in rare disease, there are 7,000 different diseases. And these diseases stem every organ system in the body and probably every target class that we currently know about. So it's impossible to have a rare disease research function that has expertise across the whole spectrum of rare diseases. The only way I believe to successfully prosecute rare diseases is through partnership. And fortunately in rare disease, there's a unique landscape for partnership. We mustn't forget in rare diseases, a huge role is played by the patient advocacy groups. These are very influential. They, in fact, in many ways control the success and failure of rare diseases because they are the patients. And, you know, whether you have a successful trial or an unsuccessful trial, the first instance depends on whether you have patients who recruit and are willing to take the drug. Without them, we have no data. We also have very exciting partnerships in the academic arena. If we go back to that where I started, where 7,000 different diseases, how would you build an infrastructure across so many diseases? You can't do it internally. You have to look externally. You have to work with the experts in those areas who have the relevant models, who have the ac access to the patient groups. And, and one of the way, ways we, we've, we've thought about this is we've developed something called the Rare Disease Consortium, based in the UK, where we've partnered with the six leading universities in the UK to create a model where they come to us with their ideas for the treatment of rare disease. They come to us with the disease expertise and we provide the R&D expertise. And, and I think this is gonna be a very exciting model and potentially a template for the future.